So first of all, thanks to Kernel Recipes because I'm just another new buy speaking and talking after Greg. Well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a bit amazing and, and crazy at the same time. So driving the industry to our upstream first. Um, this talk is is about the current status of the upstream support for the Google Chromebooks, especially for the ARM Chromebooks. And I'm going to explain how the Chrome, Chrome OS team tries to work close to upstream. And basically, my personal experience working with the Chrome OS team as an external contributor. Uh, this talk. Again, it's not about BPF, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's start first uh, a bit of me. So I did my first steps in the Linux wall at the beginning of this century, just like a user. My, my first job uh, with Linux involved was in 2005. Uh, I started in a, in a big company, a really big company, and I started programming in C++. But after two years, the company had some, some economic problems, and I was fired. I will say that was that the Lefort rule, which is last in, first out. A few months ago, later, I started to another company, that time a very small company, only four people I started designing embedded devices, embedded boards. I did the hardware, I did the schematics, PCBs, but I switched quickly to, to do the, the, what is called the, the board support package. That was my first introduction to the world of the uh, ARM, ARM CPUs and ARM boards and bootloaders and kernel and basically user space and Linux from scratch. I read several times this book, really nice book, if you want to understand how to build a full Linux distribution. And that period, also I sent some patches to upstream, but my boss didn't really like it. So my work was most working on crappy vendor kernels, crappy vendor you would, and all this stuff. Seven years later, I, I left the, com the company and I joined at uh, Collabora, where I'm working now. And the philosophy is completely different. So right now, uh, the philosophy is upstream first. Open first, open first, and thanks to Collabora, I started to work on, on different projects, but one, one of my projects was working with the Chrome OS devices. And a few months ago, I became a kernel Chrome platform maintainer together with Benson, Benson Link. So, that's, that's a dream catcher, and my dream, and the dream I want to, to achieve or to catch is the day that in, instead of receive crappy BCPs from a sub vendor, they just tell me, hey, go to upstream and get the kernel. Go to your boot and get the, the bootloader. That's the best, right? So everybody agree that upstream is, is the best, but if it's the best, why the vendors don't do it? So maybe it's because it's just challenging work upstream. I will go quick with this, with this topic because here everybody knows that it's challenging. Then I will toy, talk a little bit about an, one specific case of a consumer device, which is a Chrome OS device. And finally, I will try to, to show the current status and, and what is missing to run mainline on different Chromebooks. 
So working a string is challenging, basically because merging your source code upstream takes effort and dedication and time. And if there is many people interested in your course, sometimes it's difficult to discuss with them. You know, 10 people in 10 countries with different visions. And at the end, it's more easy to do anything behind closed doors. And you just do the patch, you test, you code the work for you. So why care about sending upstream if it's only to support? However, there are, there are a number of benefits to have your code upstream. The first benefit is the quality impact. I think that everybody knows here. Basically because the code is reviewed by, by, by other developers. But also there is less maintain, maintenance and less regressions because once the code is, is upstream, is somewhat co-maintained and improved for, from other people. Now I'm going to talk about <coughs> Chrome OS. For those that, <coughs> sorry. For those that, that don't know Chrome OS, Chrome OS is the system that, that runs in, in every Chromebook. Chrome OS is not Android. Maybe it's, it's somewhat similar, but it's not exactly the same. And for Chrome OS, the security is very important, also for Android. So for that reason, the devices, uh, the devices, uh, I mean, the, the software is often updated. The devices auto update every six weeks, more or less, and are supported about six years. Um, there is a lot of different devices in the field, different models. So it's impossible to maintain a kernel for, for every device, and they try to, to join the, the effort. The Chrome OS kernel is based on an LTS version. After the Greg talk, you know why, why is the reason. And all the devices that year use that kernel. Even that, they end with six, seven branches for the same year, but at last this is not 50. And one thing that they try to do is at least do uh, one kernel upgrade version uh, during the lifetime of the, of the device. Uh, I went this year to ELC and Duke Douglas Anderson, which is a Chrome OS developer, uh, did a, a talk also related to this, and he said that 10 years ago there was more much against about Android doing all private development, that now Chrome OS tries to not replicate that. I think that also Android try, tries to not replicate that, and the solution for this is upstream first. The Chrome OS team has an upstream first policy, which basically means that when you have a patch, you just send to upstream, try to get it merged before it goes to your LTS kernel. That's sometimes possible, that's sometimes not possible. So to track these patches, the team use different tags on their downstream kernel or LTS kernel. Uh, if you look at, at the Chrome OS kernel, you can see tags like this. You can see the uh, commits that are tagged la, uh, as upstream commits, which means that are picked directly from the Linux tree, just with uh, g cherry pick minus x. Other that are picked from the from JIT, from a maintainer's repository that will fit mainline later, and others that are still under discussion or are not accepted, so are picked from the mailing list. 
Apart from this, they also have some tags to backport things. This is when you got a merge conflict because and you need to a small fix for, for this. And a fix app that also fixes the merge config. And the most interesting are the Chromium that are dispatches that are not upstream yet. Ide ideally, will never go upstream. And ideally, uh, this should be zero. So why upstream is, is good for Chrome OS? This also applies to, to other devices. Basically because you get free code, free code reviews that often finds much better solutions and identifies different problems. You also can get free bug fixes as others use your code and so you know, they can fix problems that even you don't know. But for the team specifically, it's because it makes abreps possible, which means do a kernel update during the, the device lifetime cycle. And also because when you start a new, a new product, a new device, you pick the, the latest LTS, so the starting of the next project is more easy because you already have a lot of patches that are already merged. Okay, this is a, a bit of numbers. This is the number of upstream commits. That means that for different LTS versions, is for 4, 4, 14, and 4, 19. You can see that there is a lot of upstream, upstream commits in the, in the Chrome OS kernel, which means that they pick a lot of patches from upstream, so they in some way review and they also test these patches because they need. Ideally, you should see that this decreases, but in that case, it's not what happens. And you see a bit of difference between Chrome OS, well, I mean, Chrome OS 4.4 is very similar to Chrome OS 4.14. And Chrome OS 419 has less patches, but that just because it's still in, in development. So we'll probably have more patches that were targeted uh, upstream. On the other side, we have the Chromium commons. And in this graph, we can see clearly that the number of, commit, um, of Chromium commits, or the specific commits from Chromium, is decreasing. You see a lot of commits in the Chrome OS 4.4, less commits in 4.14, and even less commits in 4.19, and hopefully in the next LTS will be less Chromium commits. And why Chrome OS is good for upstream? Uh, Chrome OS is good for upstream because it provides a review bandwidth upstream. As I said, they pick a lot of patches, so they are able to test these new patches and they merge these patches and this can provide extra testing. And also one of the important things that I think is one of the, the keys that Greg did, uh, said in, in his talk is that requires that hardware vendors work with uh, upstream. And here, there is some numbers about this. Uh, Mediatek is one of the Chrome OS vendors. Basically, here you can see that the first Mediatek, the first Mediatek Chromebook, shipped with a 318, and after that they started to to push patches upstream. And you see how the vendor is involved in the kernel. And I think that the next Chromebook, the next MediaTek Chromebook will ship in 419. So they are continuing, continuing sending patches to upstream. 
Another vendor, another Chromebook vendor is Rockchip. And here is basically the same. The first Chromebook shipped with a free 14. And they started to, to send patches then. There is another Chromebook with a Rockchip chat, chat chip that was shipped with a 44. So they continued sending patches to upstream. And actually, this is decreasing a little bit. But that is now because Rockchip is in at least the, 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 the processors that are now uh, is, is really well supported right now. So all of these ships, all, all, all contexts, uh, triggers one question. If the Chrome OS team does the such effort to, to push things mainline and force vendors to push things mainline, is really effective. I mean, you can actually run a mainline kernel in a Chromebook. Well, the answer will be later. Let me talk a little bit about the internals of a Chromebook. In the Chromebook, there is a there is a special part that is called cross EC that basically if you want to support it in mainline you need to support this this embedded controller but for some reason a big part of of it was never tried to to upstream so during last year we did a, a big effort to to upstream this part the cross EC basically is a MCU with a completely open source firmware. Is it connected to the application processor via a bus? Usually it's a SPI, I2C, or LPC. And basically acts a multifunction device driver where there are different devices hanging on the core. We have accelerometers, we have barometers, we have light sensor. There is also PWM, PWM <coughs> drivers. On some Chromebooks, they also control the keyboard, the light bar, and the real-time clock. And apart from this, on some devices, there is another embedded controller that is hanging of the main embedded controller that is, co is called PD, which is power, power delivery. The, the upstream process to, to have this super mainline uh, consisted on get the patches from the Chrome OS LTS kernel, squash, squash the patches, and split properly between the different subsystems, test the patches, submit upstream, discuss, discuss with the maintainers, Spin the patches, submit the upstream, and finally, if you are lucky, they are accepted. Uh, during the upstream process, we needed to, to deal with some problems. In some cases, we needed to do um, a rework of some drivers because we're not upstream friendly. Also, a lot of code uh, was in the MFD subsystem, but shouldn't be, the, be there. So when we tried to upstream that code to the MFD subsystem, the, the maintainer said, OK, <laughs> stop and rethink again a little bit your driver. And also test uh, the cross EC in some specific drivers was difficult because the, dry, uh, the, um, the Chromebook was not very well supported in mainline, so you needed to fix first, try to support that part, and then try to test your drivers. Actually, most of the cross EC drivers are now upstream, and new related drivers will go through the upstream first path. Uh, Chrome OS team is, is trying to push a lot on, on this, and, but also some patches need still some rework and some, 
some discussion with mainline because the way they they are done is not correct. Okay, we have this. So what's missing in mainline? So if you look at this graph, this is a comparison between the 419 LTS kernel and the Chrome OS 419. This is the difference between the two. And basically, if you see, you see that a big bunch of patches of the difference are in the GPU drivers. Another part is in network. A less part is in media and pin control. And a little less is in, is in platform. And there, is, there are still lots of spread parts on other subsystems. But I will, I will try to take a look at these numbers. Um, let's focus on the GPU. Just to say that the net, this part of this, this part here, the net driver, the difference is not because the code is not upstream. It's just because they pick a lot of patches from upstream. That's not the case of the GPU drivers which the situation is a bit different. In the GPU drivers, you have some difference in the Midgard, in the Midgard driver, a lot of difference in the AMD driver, and some difference in the i9050 and MSM and other drivers. This part of here, the AMD driver, happens the same as the as the as what happens with the with the network driver the difference are not changes that are not upstream are changes that i they are picked from upstream so changes that are not in lts 419 kernel but are upstream but that's not not the case with the maker driver in this case all this 10% is different, is really new. And the reason for that is because they use the, the, the ARM driver, so for Chromebooks, the, the graphics stack is, is really important. And the, at the time, uh, there was not a really good alternative to, to do that. But now, we have Panfrost. Panfrost is a, an open source driver. It's for the Mali GPUs. It's, it's still under development, but it's still it's trying to, do, to support a lot of things. And the question is, can Chromebooks with, uh, can Chromebooks with a Mali GPU use Panfrost? And can Chromebooks run mainline kernel? Demo. Okay. This is one one Chromebook. This Chromebook chips with um, with a rock chip CPU. Oops. This ships with a rock chip CPU and has a, a GPU, a Mali GPU. And if you try to test this Chromebook just using the latest Debian, that's Debian, scratch Debian, no modifications. The only modification that is here is that is using kernel 5.3. And the MESA is the latest version. And you, if you can see at the results, you can see that at last, a lot of the connections, and mainly of the USB, the, the, the display, the Wi-Fi, the, the Bluetooth, the touchpad, the touch screen, the camera, the Type-C connector, uh, con uh, the different buttons, the embedded controller is also supported. 
everything except the audio, which actually is not really well supported. Well, the, the speaker works, but not, not the headphones. And well, let's see. And the funny thing of this is that you can play games. Well, I'm not connecting this to this but because another to the external display because another thing that files is the external display. <laughs> I hear <did> that. <laughs> but well, I hope you can see. That's working. And you can play games. The frame rate is uh, still a bit low, but we are improving a lot of on this. Do you want to to play a little bit and <laughs> and pass? I think it's too... Okay, basically that's that's all, and that's the work I did. Any questions? <laughs> Oops. Hello. Yeah. So, um, assumedly, the external display and the audio does work with the official Chromium kernel. Uh, sorry. So the, the the product kernel that from that ships with Chrome OS. I assume that the external display and the audio does work with that. Yes. So uh, what happened to those patches? Okay. Uh, for the audio, I think it's... I didn't look at, at this yet, but I think the only problem is the UCM profile. So it's just user space because I got with... Uh, playing with a, a mixer, I can play songs. With the external display, it's funny because it was working, but was working before Panfrost. Once you have Panfrost, it doesn't work. If you don't have Panfrost, it works, but of course the performance is very low. Okay, thanks. Pass, just pass. So, uh, is uh, Chromex going to switch to Mesa instead of uh, ARM proprietary driver? <laughs> I don't know. Actually, the performance is not like the, the ARM driver, so there is a still a need of uh, still a need of of work to do in this. And are uh, they using Mesa on other no. uh, embedded devices? Uh, one of the plans that we have in the company is try to make the Chrome OS user space running on top of Panfrost. But we didn't test yet this. So the Mali proprietary driver in user space and the open source Panfrost no. can the, the Chrome OS user space with the Panfrost driver. So uh, what's missing in the Panthros driver to make it performant? <laughs> I mean, like, what are the items uh, okay. community could help with to improve the performance? Well, I'm not sure I'm able to, to answer this question because I'm not one of the Panthros develop developers. Then where can we find the Panthros developers? Is there like a mailing list or an IRC? No, it's in, it's in mainline. The Panfrost driver is in mainline. Sure, but there are some sort of development channels, right? Yes. Uh, where can we find those? <laughs> no. It, it, 
<laughs> Actually, it's not Google, which, we, which is developing the Pamphros driver. Is that like an IRC, maybe? Yes. I mean, you should know the answer, but it's just IRC free node, uh, yeah, Pat Frost. So. It's a leading question. I want to. Oh, okay. Okay. Just to respond to that, it's a free desktop project, so you should get all the information there. Uh, the mailing list and everything is, is in their website. Okay, thank you for lunch. Thank you.